What's up guys? Welcome to Frozen Electronics. Um, I have a few uh, announcements to make. The first one and the biggest one being that um, I have uh, I have been talking with the um, I don't know if he's the vice president or the, the guy that owns Smartboard, the boards that have been reviewed on the EEV blog that allow you to uh, solder SMD components very easily. I actually showed one that I bought in my last video. It's the first time I've actually been able to try one out. Unfortunately, I bought the wrong size. I thought I had the right number of pins, but unlike um, some breakout boards where, you know, the pin, the pads will extend so that you can go anywhere from 8 to 40 pin um, packages, like you see that often with QFP breakouts, these, it has to be the exact number of pins. And so I actually needed like 32 pin QFN. I ended up getting 44. Um, anyway. My point being that they are sending me a bunch of boards to review and I get to give away five smart board packages to my lucky viewers. So stay tuned for that. And uh, I would recommend subscribing and liking because when those, um, when that giveaway comes around, you're gonna wanna be uh, paying attention. I'm gonna post this over on the EEV blog as well um, so that I actually have enough viewers to give away five. I'm sure actually I probably do have enough viewers to give away five smartboard packages, but if you want to uh, participate in the contest, keep an eye out for details. Um, I'm trying to come up with ideas for how to give them away. I was thinking some sort of uh, trivia or competition. Um, I was thinking about uh, having some sort of electronics theory uh, competition, you know, uh, basic things like Ohm's Law or in incorporating something like that so that if you win, uh, I'll select five winners who get the question right or something at random and uh, give it away to them. So that'll be really exciting. And the cool thing is that Smartboard is actually taking care of the shipping. They're going to ship them directly to you, which makes it easier for me in that uh, I don't have to reship things. It doesn't cost me anything. So a huge thank you to everyone over at Smartboard. This is going to be, a, I think, a big boost for the vlog, uh, which I'm really excited about. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. Um, other than that, I'm working on a couple projects um, behind me. You can see the shopping I did the other day. There's my new uh, fluorescent lamp. Now, after having this lamp for a couple days now, I have to say I highly recommend fluorescent lights. Um, they are energy saving compared to incandescent. They're not as efficient as LED lights, of course, but um, just the color temperature of the light and the fact that, um, here, let's take a closer look, shall we? I'll try and keep everything nice and smooth. It's one of these bigger, long lights like this, and you can uh, swivel the whole thing. And this one is kind of a cheapo um, one, but just the way it illuminates everything I'm working on, uh, I don't know, there's just something about the color of the light. It makes it really easy to see detail in circuits and on chips. And I actually have my other lamp turned out, but when I have both of them on here and I'm working on things, my bench is actually very well illuminated, plus my overhead light is on. Um, so that's quite a bit of lux. And then you can see the difference in the color temperature. That's a regular incandescent. So it's kind of that yellowish white, whereas this is that nice uh, cool white. And uh, I really, really like this cool white. Um, plus I have my microscope here. So when I'm looking at things, uh, most of the fluorescent light from the lamp is shining right down on that. And of course, the great thing about these flexible lights is I can bring them down. Uh, you can extend the arm out like this, bring it closer and aim it directly over at whatever you're working on. So as you can see, you can get that one spot to be a lot brighter. So very, very cool. Um, yeah, my point being that I would recommend fluorescent lamps. Oh, this one is a little bit stiff though. It's really hard to push it back up with one hand. Um, I also talked about the things I bought. I got this flux removing pen. Um, I might actually have to take this back. Uh, it actually works great, but mine, these are supposed to, the tip is supposed to spring back. You notice how when I push mine down, oh, it sort of springs back, but it's supposed to be a lot better than that. And so while I'm using it, uh, the stuff is just pouring out of it. Basically, I have to pull the, the tip out by hand. So just watch out for that. That battery pack that I also showed um, the f uh, for the four AA's, it's great because you can hook it up to your breadboard and uh, six volts, 
is the perfect amount to power most things, especially analog stuff. Right here, I, uh, I rigged up an LM3914 uh, dot bar driver that I showed in my last video. And actually, let's see if I have a good enough connection there. I should. There we go. So you can see it's a very easy circuit to light up, uh, to work with. Uh, just like Dave showed, this is of course is running off of batteries, so you'd probably want to stick with uh, dot mode, but switching to bar mode is as easy as putting uh, your VCC on pin 9, and then it switches over to bar mode. Easy, but see, once you have all 10 LEDs on, you know, that's quite a bit of current you're drawing from your batteries. And when nothing's on like this, um, the LM3914 draws very little power. So what you could do um, is when there's a change, uh, you could have it flash on with the dot, you know, come on for a second and then turn back off or something. Um, I'm sure there's quite an easy way to do that. I can't remember if there's a blanking pin. I don't know if there is a blanking pin on the LM3914, but, uh, and then other than that, what have I been doing? Not a heck of a lot too interesting. Um, I've been doing a lot of coding. Um, I was playing around with an Atmega. Oh, and there's the other thing I'm working on. This is a USB ASP or USB ASP that I bought on eBay uh, a long time ago when I was starting out um, with AVR. So this is a basic AVR programmer using um, an Atmega 48. I don't know if I can get an angle on that, but when you buy it, it doesn't come with these pin headers. It just comes with these two and the little jumper options there. Now, um, of course, now that I have an A, not only do I have an AVR Dragon, but I also have um, my Mini Pro programmer and I also have a, a USB ISP Mark II, which I don't really use much anymore, but I do have one. So this has made them become basically obsolete to me. Now, when I was looking at it a while back, I noticed that all these pins were marked with all the uh, pin numbers for the actual microcontroller. So it's basically a breakout board as well. Sorry, it doesn't want to stay in place because of the bus pirate that's attached to it. Also, I showed I got the bus pirate labels in the last one and uh, I heat shrunk them on. Super, super handy to be able to see what everything is uh, without having to look at my reference sheet or memorizing the colors, which is also kind of difficult. But anyway, so what I've been trying to do is I'm going to start using this as a breakout board for the Atmega 48, uh, which is really handy. But the only problem is with this particular design, they have these five jumper options here. And I've been trying to find a board layout or a schematic, which actually I have found, I just have to take a closer look at. The options are no diode, power target, uh, self-programming, slow clock, and then a user option. Um, so obviously it was intended to be used as a breakout board to some degree, but the power target and the no diode options even though I'm supplying power directly to the microcontroller from the bus pirate, when I hook up the programming cable to actually program the app Mega, um, it it turns everything off, almost like it's being shorted or like it can't supply enough current, but I know the bus pirate can supply enough current. So anyway, I don't know what the problem is there. I actually had already programmed this once before and I kind of, I think I screwed up the firmware a little bit, which is kind of what I was trying to do. I erased it and I was trying to reprogram it with a different version of the firmware. Right here, there's also a breakout for the, um, uh, the UART, so there's receive, transmit, ground, and VCC right there, which is really handy. And I also have handy, where has it snuck off to now? Ah, see this is the problem with having such a messy bench, I can never find anything. I could have sworn that, that was right in front of me a minute ago. Anyway, I have a breakout, an FTDI basic breakout from SparkFun. So, um, yeah, I'm going to play around with that a little bit and maybe uh, use this for a project in the future because it's a nice little breakout board for the Atmega 48, which is a chip that I've never really used before. Oh, that's weird. I must have left that on. Oh, we've got a glitch. Oh, no, this just came out. There we go. Anyway, this video is already getting boring, so I'll let you guys go. That's just a quick update from Frozen Electronics. Sorry for the handheld nature, uh, but uh, as you can see, I've mentioned this before, but having this as the background 
is much more interesting than having my door and everything as the background. But unfortunately, I don't have a full-size tripod. I just have my benchtop tripod, so I'm going to have to try and figure something out. Um, I'm basically just going to have to get my hands on a full-size tripod so that I can do my videos from this angle and then switch the camera around as needed. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching, guys. And as I said, subscribe, like, check out frozenelectronics.com. Keep an eye out for that upcoming giveaway. It's going to be definitely worth it. Have a good day, guys. Bye.